This is a course on molecular and solid state physics taught at the Technical University of Graz in Austria. At the beginning of the course, we'll take a look at molecules. There are billions of interesting and useful molecules in biology and chemistry to consider. We'll use quantum mechanics to calculate properties such as the bond length, the bond strength, or the molecular energy levels. While there are very many molecules to consider, and each of these molecules can have many properties, it turns out that you can precisely calculate any property of any molecule using quantum mechanics. For many of you, it'll be the first time that you use quantum mechanics to describe more than one electron, and it will serve as a general introduction to many electron quantum systems. After we've discussed molecules, we'll go on to consider solids. In the simplest approximation, solids can be considered to be large molecules, and the techniques we develop to describe molecules can also be applied to solids. Solids have many useful properties. Some materials like steel, titanium, or aluminum are strong, and they're used because of their mechanical properties. Some solids, like copper, aluminum, and gold, are very good electrical conductors. Semiconductors like silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide, or indium phosphide are used in electronics, solar cells, and light-emitting diodes. Iron, nickel, and cobalt are magnets. There are some materials called piezoelectrics that expand when an electric field is applied across them. These are used in inkjet printers and in fuel injectors. Solids can have useful optical properties that are used to guide and manipulate light waves. Some solids have the property that their atoms are arranged in a periodic pattern. These solids are known as crystals. When crystals break, they often break along a plane of atoms. This gives the crystals their characteristic geometric shapes. Crystals can form from a single kind of atom when this atom forms a periodic pattern like the gallium crystals in the upper left, but they can also form when molecules form a periodic pattern, like in the insulin crystals in the upper right. Sugar crystals are a well-known example of crystals that form from molecules. Not all solids are crystals. Crystals typically form when a liquid is cooled very slowly. When liquids cool quickly, the atoms don't have time to form a periodic pattern and the material solidifies with the atoms in a random structure. Materials where the atoms are arranged randomly are called amorphous. A good example of an amorphous material is ordinary window glass. In this course, when we talk about solids, we will almost always be considering crystals. This is because the periodic structure of crystals makes them much easier to treat mathematically. Many of the results that we deduce for crystals can also be applied to amorphous materials. As it was with molecules, the microscopic structure of a solid determines its macroscopic properties. The arrangement of the atoms in a solid determine the electrical properties, the magnetic properties, the mechanical properties, and the optical properties. Any property of a solid can be calculated using quantum mechanics. A main goal of this course is to teach you how you can calculate any property of any crystal using quantum mechanics and a little statistical physics. Later in the course, we'll consider how light propagates through crystals. To do this quantum mechanically, we'll have to first quantize Maxwell's equations. A principle of quantum mechanics is that everything moves like a wave, but exchanges energy and momentum like a particle. The quantum particle of a light wave is called a photon. We will consider the case of many photons propagating through a crystal, and this will be our first example of a many boson quantum system. After we've discussed how light propagates through crystals, we'll consider how sound propagates through crystals. A simple model for describing how sound waves propagate through a crystal is realized by considering a periodic arrangement of masses connected by linear springs. We will write down Newton's laws of motion for this system of masses and springs and then quantize it. The quantized particles of sound are called phonons. Typically, there are many phonons in a crystal, and this is another example of a many boson quantum system. There are many similarities in the mathematical description of many photon systems 
and many phonon systems. After photons and phonons, we'll consider how electrons move through crystals. In quantum mechanics, electrons also move like waves, but exchange energy and momentum like a particle. We usually don't have any direct experience with electron waves. They are visualized on the left in a scanning tunneling microscope image. The red dots in the image are individual iron atoms, and the background is an atomically smooth copper surface. The scanning tunneling microscope measures electron density, and you can see the interference as the electron waves bounce off the iron atoms. Systems of many electrons have different properties than systems of many photons or phonons, because electrons are fermions, while photons and phonons are bosons. One of the interesting things about many electron quantum systems is that due to the Coulomb interaction between the electrons, the electrons can condense into new phases at low temperature. Probably the most interesting low temperature phase is superconductivity. In this phase, the material loses all electrical resistance. Depending on the crystal that the electrons find themselves in, they can also condense into other phases called charge density waves, spin density waves, ferromagnetism, or antiferromagnetism. Near the end of this course, we'll consider magnetism in solids and describe the phase transitions that can occur to ferromagnetism or antiferromagnetism as the electrons are cooled.